going to do a dream build. Now this is over the top extra. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. Old Town Kayak, baby. That's awesome. Hey everybody, Ryan Lilly here with Old Town. My good friend Thomas Allen, the senior editor of Kayak Fishing Fun, invited me to his house here in Minnesota. Snowy Minnesota. It's snowy Minnesota. And uh, we're going to do a dream build with the all new Big Water EPDL Plus 132. We're really excited to show you what's possible with this platform. What's really cool about doing kayak builds is you can really make it your own. You can go as simple or as complicated as possible. And what's also great is if you want to tackle it yourself, you can, but there's a bunch of shops out there. A lot of our shops will offer that service of outfitting. And that's what we want you to take from this. We're going to show you a long list of accessories that you got to have or you don't need. There's a, it's whatever you want. What do you think of the Big Water EPDL? How has that uh, opened up you know, opportunity for you. Well, it, it's it's genius because you've implemented the e-bike concept or the, the the pedal assist into the drive, which I really like because I love the, the autopilot, the remote with the, the Minn Kota 45 pound thrust trolling motor. I really like that. The fact that you have this type of technology jammed into a kayak and on a fishing platform is very exciting, has a lot of applications. Front to back, this is a great boat. All right, well, let's get started. Well, let's step behind the workbench back here and we'll show you all the accessories we're gonna put on this thing. Let's start on this side. Uh, Yak Attack hooked us up with a lot of great products, uh, arguably some of the most innovative uh, kayaking accessories, most especially storage and rod management. So on this side, we've got the Yak Attack Black Pack Pro, and I've got it in desert sand. I'm excited about desert sand. It's gonna look good, Marsh Camera. Really gonna complement that boat. So we got a lot of that. Uh, th again, Black Pack Pro, they come in three sizes. This is the 16 uh, by 13, I believe, and it'll hold, I think, five to six trays. This is the Track Pack Combo Kit. These are exciting. Um, I think soft plastic storage. Yeah, so that, that's the big thing. And, and if whether you're in a bass boat or a kayak, you always got a lot of extra packages laying around. We've got some lights, LED lighting we're going to put in. So we're going to add this rocker switch. It's complete with LEDs. And then also, it's got some USB ports here too if you want to run a camera, charge your phone. Um, because we're going to be running some wires, I did get like a a mobile bus bar or, or electrical hub here that we're gonna rig lights on, maybe the, the Mega Live. Um, so, but we'll get into that, but that's something you definitely wanna have. We're gonna be mounting a Humminbird Solix 10. So this is a pretty big unit. We've got a Yak Attack mount for that. And I just, I love these because they're simple, they're adjustable yeah. and they're heavy duty. Yep, one screen I think on this particular build is smart. Well, and, and I think that it fits this boat. Always recommend putting a red flag on the rear of the kayak. Adding a nice, reliable through-hole wiring kit to keep the water out. Keeps it clean. Yeah, keeps it clean. Manages your wires, so that, that's an option too. Um, on the rear of the boat, we are gonna add a stern light. Um, you can't be too safe, but I'm also gonna complement that with the Vizi Pro from Yak Attack. We'll look at that. Uh, if you're not filming your kayak trips, are you really kayaking? <laughs> you know, that's a fair question. We've got a couple really nice camera mounts from Yak Attack. We've got the Panfish and the Boomstick uh, from Humminbird. This is the transducer. Um, and this is actually attached to a base that attaches to a, a very cool product here from Fish Finder Mount. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. So it's almost like a throttle handle for a tiller motor, but yeah. low profile, stays out of the way, and uh, it's gonna work well on this. And this is fishfindermounts.com. I believe uh, works for all brands of live sonar because it's aluminum, it's lightweight. These guys over-engineered this thing to the hilt, so you have a lot of options. It's reliable and it's super cool. We're also going to have mega site imaging, 2D lake master mapping all built into the Humminbird. And there's a transducer in this box. It's boring. We'll pull it out when we're doing the build. We've got the metal bracket that holds the transducer on there. Uh, we do have a couple extra uh, gridlock mighty mount systems from React Attack. And so these are additional tracking that if we, we're, we're gonna look into this to see where this would go and maybe add an additional accessory. Uh, this is the Yak Attack Vizi Carbon Pro. This is a, a flag that also has a built-in battery powered light. Or we're, we're powering with Dakota lithium batteries. And we've done a lot of discussion about amp hour selection. And we know that a Solix 10 pulls just under three amps per hour. So 46 divided by three is somewhere like 14 something mm -hmm. hours. So you're gonna get a full 12 hour plus day running the Mega Live and the Solix 10 off of that battery. And if you wanna hold still, add a power pole micro. These things are fantastic. Uh, the wireless with the new battery system, um, I have an eight foot pole that goes into that. It has a little uh, wireless remote that you can use, but I mean really, 
we got a lot of options. We have to do a little bit of cutting and some hole drilling. Um, I do have some silicone, so keep that handy. If you're not comfortable with this, have a professional do it. There's a lot of shops across the country that are happy to do this for you, but I'm here to tell you, if this guy can do it, so can you. Anything that you might do to the boat because of modification isn't covered under warranty, so you wanna make sure you do your homework and that you take your time. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot here we're gonna do. We're gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step so that when you walk away from this, you can do the same thing. Each one of our kayaks in the Sportsman line comes with a branded tackle box and it has all of the things that you need uh, to get going. Uh, for this particular model, it comes with a paddle clip, some dielectric grease for your plugs, uh, the parts that you need for your um, steering, your kill switch key, and then your power cable that goes onto your battery so you can plug the battery that comes included with this boat as well as the motor cable and this plugs into the boat as well. So we'll start with the paddle clip. Super easy. Has this rubberized holder or keeper that just snaps onto the back like that. I do recommend because the inserts in, in the boat are brass to whenever possible use a just a standard Phillips screwdriver or if you need to use a drill just put it on low torque. So this here is your steering assembly. So this right here is your tensioner knob. You want to install that first. And when you're steering your boat, what this does is it locks your rudder um, in the direction that you want to go. So as you want to put that in first, then you take this bolt here, drop it into the bottom of the steering ball. You want to make sure you don't screw it all the way down because you want this ball to have play so it spins. So I'm just going to get it about halfway down out there it still spins and you take your cap it is indexed so line up those indexes Super pop it in easy. there and you're ready to roll you can lock that into the straight position like this your drive is transitioned over to motorized mode and you don't have to worry about babysitting the rudder. This is super cool. Uh, this is a 36 volt battery. Yep, 20 amp hour battery. Um, it comes included with the kayak. Uh, so our engineers worked with Amped Outdoors to dial in a battery specific for this kayak that fits underneath your seat and it's really lightweight. I usually get two or three days before I feel like I should charge it. We do not recommend that you use or tie in any other electronics to the battery. Keep this exclusive for the drive and drive only. That's why we've got the Dakota batteries. Okay, so very simple. It is color coded. So you've got red for your positive with a fuse as well as black for your negative. You Want to make sure to match those up or you'll do some damage. A little bit more than just hand tight is good. Just want to make sure it's just important that they're snug. And I would check your battery connection between outings to make sure they haven't loosened. All right, so now that's dialed in there. We have a nice battery cradle down here with your pigtail for connecting it. So we'll just plop that right down in there. There's a security, yep, there we go. So that just fits and sits in there. That is removable. So for whatever reason you want to get in and further access into your hull, you can remove this tray. Then we just plug this in and it is indexed. So you've got your prong on one side, snug that back in. There's a strap that you want to put over that to secure that. To charge, you don't want to ever charge your batteries in your boat. Um, you also want to remove that during transportation. Make sure you keep these clean and greased. And this connection here connects in with the drive. This cable fits right in there. Everything's already pre-wired and then this plugs into your drive just like so. Okay, so you're gonna wanna hit that with grease, hit this with grease, hit your cable with grease. Can't, can't ever be too generous with your grease, honestly. And lastly, you got your kill switch. This plugs in right beside your seat, just like that. We, we wanna have a switch. So one of these switches is gonna power the navigation lights. The other switch is gonna power all the interior cabin lights. So we're gonna to have to cut a hole in the side of our boat. It's scary at first, but you're gonna find that it actually isn't that difficult. We're gonna go right here, and thankfully, because of this access hatch, I can run my hand up in there, and there is nothing right here. I'm gonna measure just a little bigger than the footprint here of these modules. And so that is inch and five eighths by three inches. And then we're gonna look for a straight edge here. We're gonna measure down. I'm gonna put the top of that thing at two and a half inches. Basically want it right there. And then I just measure down an inch and five eighths. So we're gonna draw lines like that. Then we're gonna get a drill and a jigsaw 
and that'll get the job done. It'll be flush mounted. This comes with screws and I'm also going to add a small bead of silicone. Now before we drill holes, I picked a drill bit that will accommodate the end of the tape, which is also very close to the diameter of the wire. It's almost the same. So you want to have a hole that you can work with. Don't overdo it because any hole you put in the boat is a place for water to get in. Drill the hole, Ryan. I know you've been wanting to do this. Very nice. Okay. So now we're going to drill holes for these self-tapping screws. I could just ram these into the side of the kayak, but if you're going to use a, a drill bit to create the pilot hole, you want that drill bit to be the size of the shaft of the screw. You want to be able to see the threads on the outsides. You want that to bite, but you don't want it to be too big. If it's too big, it'll strip out in the hole. Correct. You tell me if you like that. I like it. We're going in. Now, before we get crazy here, let's put a screw in to make sure it's gonna work. Perfect, okay? So we've got the screws in just to make sure everything lined up. We didn't crank them down, didn't torque anything. We're gonna pull this back out. Ryan is gonna put a bead of silicone around the hole that we created. If you wanna just put a little dab on each one of those little bitty holes, nothing gonna hurt. Just snug, you don't gotta go crazy, okay? There you go. I'll get a shop towel and clean up that excess and we'll repeat. We are going to place cabin lights. Now this is over the top extra. So we're going to start in the front with red. As you said, it's actually going to be easier on your eyes. And then we're going to move to under the seat. We're going to add white lights. And then in the rear compartment, we're going to put blue because red, white, and blue. And that's cool. And so the first thing we're going to do is drill the hole here. And then I'm going to show you how I use the, the, the fish tape to run wires from here to there. We've already marked this so we know where they're going. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is extend this out. And Ryan, I'm gonna have you go down to that access hatch. Okay. So because of the nature of this tape, you can kind of manipulate the direction, but got it? Yep. Okay, all right. So now that we've got that one there, we're gonna take this one give it the same length tape thoroughly otherwise they can pull apart or get so, stuck in that or get hole. stuck kind of like a yeah. little wedge all right so now we've got that we're going to run this back through well don't put too much tape on there then it gets jammed in there i honestly think that this one hack was worth my trip to minnesota well and it's going to cost you 15 bucks yeah. now we've got the light right here all that good? Mm hmm I'll have you fish that back through. Don't pull too hard. Okay. Just like that. Now, that light is in position. We're going to have to drill the holes and add some uh, silicone, just a dab. And now on this side, we're gonna run those same wires over to the same spot. So those wires are actually gonna go across the boat this way. Uh, we've done some wire wrangling. We've got it all together. Uh, it's very simple. You want the positives to go to the switch that they're gonna affect. Uh, the negative will go to the battery, but then this switch also has a positive power source that goes to the battery as well. We're gonna add a little bit of silicone. Don't gotta go crazy here. Just like that. Make sure it's upright. Okay, now I'm gonna grab these screws. So don't go crazy cranking those screws and you want it to be nice and easy. Okay, screwdriver just to hand tighten. Okay, so it took some time, but we finally have the lights installed. Do you want to show them how it works? They work perfectly. We have the navigation lights on a separate switch. Uh, can sh shut those off and then the cabin lights on a separate switch too. So that kind of gives you the option to right. run what you need when you want it. It uh, looks great. That's the most complicated part of the build. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to install the transducer. We're going to run the mega live power cord. 
Um, and those are gonna require us to drill some big holes and we're gonna use these wire grommets uh, from Wilderness Systems. So we're gonna put one over here, put one in that little scupper hole area, and then one right here, and then the graph will get mounted right here. So not really a time consuming task, but we do need to drill some holes. I've got some spade bits. These are, you know, just for wood and whatnot, but if you take the bit, and you hold it right on the side of the grommet there, you want it to be about the same size to just a skosh bigger than the, the diameter of that circle there. So I'm gonna drill a hole here and I, I think that we probably want it, I don't know, lower to the floor maybe. Let's do some work here. The, the Mega Live transducer is gonna be on the fish finder mounts live sonar mount and that's gonna sit right here and that excess wire, we're gonna kind of curl up and stick in this little pocket. And then the connections for that will run inside the boat will be right here. So these two cables, they need to be sticking out like this, okay? And all the excess cable for the Mega Live that's attached to the, the transducer will be coiled up in here. So we need to run these wires up to here. We'll slide that up to you, Ryan. Got it. Got it. Okay. I think just a couple wraps ought to be enough to. Nice and easy. Got it. Okay, let's start with super easy. Good enough. All right, once you pull that through. But same thing again. I'm gonna set that up there. So we're just gonna like drop that in there, get it out the way. And there is our Ethernet for Mega Live. So these grommets come with several of these rubber things. It's kind of sort of perforated. There we go. Slide that in there like that. And you want them to be fairly even. You can kind of manipulate that. Let's slide that to there, just like that. Then you're gonna slide this in. And now that will sit in the hole that's how that'll look in the end. We're gonna have to reattach or attach the back side to that. We're gonna do that here quickly and that side will be done. Next step is we're gonna mount the transducer and this is the transducer that's gonna show me 2D temperature, mega side imaging, all that. That's gonna go underneath the boat. The, the kayak comes with a plate pre-assembled. We're gonna pull that off and we need to assemble this little bracket guy and it's gonna fit right like that, right down underneath the kayak right here and we're gonna drill a hole because this cable is gonna come up from this scupper hole and we're gonna run it right into the kayak right there. And we're actually gonna route that around to right here. So we're gonna drill a hole here and there. Very nice. Wire grommet will fit in the hole like that. And this other one will go right in there. That's actually pretty good, Ryan. Something I like about this plate is it's reversible. And so it'll accommodate a number of different uh, transducers. But in our case here, we want to line it up kind of like that. So I'm going to, this did not come I with. You need to flop it because. Oh, good. yeah. See? see, that's what I'm talking about right there. So now, so this is the bottom of the boat. So we've got a little room to play with there, but not much. And then after we tighten the bolts down, those bolts stick up about the length of the nut, essentially. So we're gonna have about a quarter inch to grind off. Um, so piece of cake. Now that when we have that tightened down and the top's knocked off, it'll attach underneath there and we can run the wires and install the grommets. Yep. All right, Ryan, pass that cable up through the scupper hole. Now we got a bunch of wire and we're gonna have to do a little cable management with zip ties a little bit. Tell me when. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to crawl under the boat. I'm going to reinstall that plate with a Phillips head, and I'm going to do it manually because these are brass inserts, and this is something that you definitely don't want to strip. Nice. All right, so this is the back side of the grommet. This is kind of the nut, if you will, and so we're going to slide that through right over here. Ryan's going to pass that cable through. And he's gonna feed the, the wire. We've got a single cable grommet and all we need to do, basically pop it on like that. Okay, then we'll just slide that in. 
And Ryan will put the gasket up against the back and screw it on hand tight. Don't gotta go crazy. There we go. Excellent. Now that is going to run up through there, as is this. These need to go on first. So we have this one. And then where's our other? Run those through there, Ryan. Gasket in. Ryan got the grommets installed. They look good. Now we're going to do a little cable management. So you're just going to kind of create a little loop and work it back. Ryan, if you'll hold that right there. It's a good idea with zip ties. You don't need to crank them down. Just get it right there so it's a little snug and we'll put one on the other side. Now, hold on. I got to trim the edges. I like it. I like to keep it clean. Do the same with the transducer cable. All right, those are out of the way. What's really nice, Ryan, this kayak especially, I love the front access. You know, the, you can easily get yep. in there, grab a battery, uh, take it out, take it inside, plug it in. You could lightly strap that battery down with like a three to six foot cam strap, and that's all you need to kind of secure that in place. Slide that thing on there. You're gonna mount the Solix 10. We did have to modify some holes in the gimbal, uh, so expect that. Very easy, it took just a minute. And I'm gonna mount, this is the base plate for the uh, the fish finder mounts, live sonar mount, and we'll, we'll get that all set up. It's a lot easier if you mount the base plate before you have the whole unit on there. So show them how easy that is. That's actually a great product. So you loosen, you loosen the thumb screw and that frees up that T-bolt there and then you're able to slide it right into the T-slot on the base plate. Just like that, tighten that up. Then when you get your screen, you can you know, change the direction of where you want that to go, how, how you want it to face you, lock it in, and if you want to change it, once it's mounted, you just push this button and it stays connected, but it frees up the teeth and allows you to change the angle of the screen. So really great accessory. Now let's, let's install this. This is just gonna take a second. A couple of washers just to add a little extra support. I've got these little butterfly nuts that kind of keeps the on and off effective and time saving. You don't want to haul a bunch of tools with you in the kayak. All right, now that that's on there, we can mount the live sonar transfer mount. This thing is just awesome. I love this thing. Just like that, a little security pin right there, and then you've got a set screw. Get that, let's say, so that's looking straight forward right there. And that will serve kind of as your compass for where your live is looking. And all I gotta do is turn the handle, check that out. Isn't that cool? And then you can see the cables that we ran through earlier connect right here. And I'm gonna have a little excess, so what we'll do is we'll get the zip ties out again. And then I can slide that excess cable right inside that pocket. And then make these connections. That's Ethernet, so line up the tab. That's on. That's on. Get that plugged in. Got my Ethernet in. First try. Look at that. Write that down. So we have Mega Live. We've got Mega Side Imaging. We've got a Humminbird Solix wired through the bottom of the boat here so we don't have cables going everywhere. Now we've got a lot of cool Yak Attack accessories we're gonna put on there, including some camera mounts, maybe some additional tracking, but we are on the downhill slide for this thing being totally decked out. Yeah. So now that all the major things are done, now we're just kind of fine tuning the customization on this mm -hmm. build. And so what we're thinking is we wanna add one of these short tracks back here so we can run our Yak Attack busy pull. We want to add potentially another short track here. So I'm going to mark my holes where we want to drill. I don't want one to go there. I want another one to go here. Okay. There we go. So now we have our template for where we're going to drill out. Super easy. Let's just go ahead and. We're going to hit this with the silicone so just a dab of this stuff in each of the holes and then we'll be able to put that plate on and fix it with the screws that came with them all right ryan will wrap it up with the screwdriver 
That goes your bet. Yep. We take the ACTAC flag that has that T-bolt accessory. I'm going to loosen that. Slide it onto the track. Be able to center that or slide it anywhere on that track that I want it. So easy. Tighten it. Move that in a little bit. These things are just great. Slides right in. And all we do is crank it down. Rod holder is adjustable. Yep. To whatever angle you want it. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Piece yep. of cake. Super easy how this installs. All you do is you pop this guy off. You got this little tray. And you've got those same type of T-bolts, right? So loosen that one up. Drop that one in. Tighten that up. For the sake of our discussion here, right? You can just see how they seat, seat right together. I mean, super cool, right? You got a lot of extra storage and they pop off super easy, just like that. We're gonna put uh, a base for the, the Panfish Pro camera mount right up here. Again, you can put a cup holder if you want. Set that like that. And I think this is probably your best angle to really capture all the experience here. Ryan, I think that'll work. How's that one gonna fit back there? Yeah, I think it's gonna fit just fine. We're using that same mighty mount back here. Looks perfect. Let's get the PowerPole Micro set up. This is built into the mold, a platform to accommodate the bracket. Super easy, but the first thing we probably need to point out is it does come with screws, but those are not to be used to hold it. Just down. plugs the holes. Yep, yeah, let's get those out. Here's the bracket. And just like we've been saying, these are brass bushings, so you don't want to go crazy. This is super easy how you put this in. This is actually very intuitive. An anchoring option. In a kayak, that's a game changer, as they say. This is remote activated and runs on a lithium battery. So you don't have to run wires and you just got a little fob that you hang around your neck. You put the battery in, I'll grab the drive. Nice, and this is the Black Pack Pro. Uh, we love this thing, the Desert Tan is awesome. So one of the cool little tricks is these crates have these little clips on the side. So we just take that, that bungee that's there and lock it in. Last thing we're gonna add is a visibility flag. It's actually illegal to transport your kayak in many states without it. Simple as that. That's it. We're done. Bro. We just wrapped up the dream build of the Old Town Sportsman Big Water EPDL Plus 132, and I don't think either one of us could be more pleased. This is a dream rig. Cutting edge technology, award-winning technology. We have Humminbird, Yak Attack, FishFinderMouse.com, so many cool things, PowerPole Micro. Yep. This thing is rigged inside and out for fishing, and it is, this is what I dream about at night. You know, if you want to learn more about everything that went into this build, where can they learn about it? Well. Kayak is oldtownwatercraft.com. You can go to hummingbird.com. You can go to yakattack.com, fishfindermounts.com, and powerpole.com. And that will have everything that we put in this boat. Uh, the, the elbow grease, that's on your own. But it takes time. It's a lot of fun. And man, I can't wait to get this thing on the water. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. This Thanks has been all a lot the way fun. from Maine to Minnesota in January to build yep. a kayak.